Thank you for the introduction and thank you Devar Goda for inviting me to give the talk here. Also, I want to thank uh, Rajat Mishra who helped me to prepare the notes. I mean, last one semester I was reading Hoover's paper, papers with him. So, and also I want to apologize in advance if I make mistakes because, yeah, I'm not a specialist in this subject, but still. Um, so, so, the goal of the three lectures related to this introduction to addict spaces is very modest. Uh, what we want to do is the following. So, I just recall. Um, construction of schemes or formal schemes uh, from uh, as um, local leading spaces. So for schemes, we start with some ring A, commutative ring, and we define spec A. And then we say that it is covered by this kind of DF, where F is inside A. Spec A is a set of prime ideals. But one of the takeaway from this construction is that um, spec A is quasi-compact. And uh, DF's forms basis, and DF's are also quasi compact. And there's one, one more thing that is very particular about this construction is that um, every closed irreducible subset has a unique generic point. So from the algebraic geometry point of view, this allows us to do lots of arguments in ethyl topology, the specialization and generalization. And the way we construct the function is as follows. We define uh, this ODF to be localized at f, and we know that intersection of these dfs are again of this form, so quasi-compact open basis, and then we show that these functions glues on this quasi-compact open basis, and then we can extend it to define a sheaf on um, spec A, and then the definition of schemes is that it's a, a local leading spaces such that there's open covering which is isomorphic to spec A with this kind of functions. And similar thing happens here. So again, A is um, iadically complete. So then we take, um, so there's, there's a topology given by I on A. So I can talk about, uh, I think the notation is SPF A. This is open prime ideals. A, and again, you can take DF, and uh, functions, again, DF will be quasi-compact, and the functions are on this thing is that I take AF, this might not be complete, so I take this ideal, I take the, uh, uh, completion along this ideal to get the functions on this DFs, and then we can glue these functions together, to get a sheaf on SPF A, and again we call something as a, a formal scheme. If it is a locally ring space, which is covered by open set, those open set together with the functions are isomorphic to some SPF A together with this, these functions. So these are the two examples that I am comfortable with, but then there are examples coming from uh, rigid analytic varieties. Um, 
So the affine case or the calculus part, the multivariable calculus part in this setting is given by the following thing. So we start with the K non-Archimedean uh, field. So it has a non-Archimedean norm and I take OK to be all X inside K says that norm of x is less than or equal to 1. Then uh, typical open set here will be, I take Tn. Um, so this is power series. So says that norm of Ai tends to 0 as i tends to infinity, OK? And my, for this kind of rings, um, I can talk about um, sort of the ring of integers, if I am not wrong to call this ring of integers. Uh, it's, it's the usual thing that's um, same thing as some ai ti inside k, t1, tn, such that uh, ai now are in OK. OK? So, so this is the first, so this is, this, uh, um, is the completion of the polynomial algebra with respect to the norm that comes from uh, this non-Archimedean field. So this is the completion. Um, so, and though this is not adic anymore, this is adic, so OK, T1, Tn is adic. And uh, normally, the defining ideal, the ideal here is taken to be some beta inside K star, such that norm of beta is so the ideal generated by the ideal is the ideal generated by beta. Because you cannot take the maximal ideal of k if suppose k is uh, algebraically closed, so the maximal ideal is not finitely generated. And we always want this, the uh, definition of, the ideal of definition to be finitely generated. So we take this, this to be the ideal of definition. And in general, what we'll be considering is this kind of thing that I take k t1 tn modulo i, where i is a closed ideal. OK. So these are these uh, three things. So these are, this is the local part of uh, this uh, rigid analytic spaces, so it's called affinoid rings. And again, you can try to glue this together, but then there is a problem of gluing, so then you have to define what are open set. So the states method, you don't really get actual open set, but you get a Grothendieck topology, such that you can define sheaves on this Grothendieck topology, but there are certain problems with this. Uh, so uh, states topological or Tate's topology, G topology. So the deficiencies are as follows. Um, so first of all, there are not enough points. So the meaning here is that, so suppose you have a sheaf on uh, this kind of object, so you know what is the topology, growth in topology, but there are not enough points to detect when a sheaf is zero or not. So, and also there's a problem here is that, second, if I have k over k infinite extension, and then if I take a to so in general, this should give me a map on the other direction from points here to points here, but it does not happen in case of Tate's construction. 
This also this is also true if we work with classical algebraic varieties. So if I have classical algebraic varieties, that is closed points over ma, say complex number for instance, and if I take function field and take the algebraic closure of the function field, then there is no uh, map in the obvious direction. So because there are, so I mean you have to get, uh, you have to know points of co-dimension, I mean non-closed points also in classical algebraic setting. So you can say missing non-closed points. And another thing is that uh, because of these reasons, especially the first one, it's very hard to have a um, ethyl to cohomology counterpart here for arbitrary, say, constant sheaves or locally constant sheaves. And, uh, and also the fa fact is that in these cases, if I take whatever the maximal uh, spectrum of this kind of guys, it might not be spectral in the sense that there can be reducible closed subset who, which, which has uh, several generic points. Okay? So, and now what is the solution for this? The so solution is given by, I mean, one such solution was given by Barkovic, but then Barkovic's construction also have one deficiency, deficiency that uh, it only considers a rank one valuation. So we will not describe that, but we'll directly go to the solution. So solution, I will just write local calculus. So what are the things that we are interested in is given by this following definition, um, a ring. A is a ring. Topological ring, sorry. It is called Huber. If uh, there exists A0 inside A open subring called the ring of definition. Such that uh, A zero is iadic for some finitely generated ideal I. Okay. So here we are not uh, asking this A zero to be complete with respect to the iadic topology. It just has to be iadic. So examples, so that's the, so there's a lot list of examples here. So first, uh, A, B, any ring, does not have to be topological ring, so the discrete case. Then um, I, I can take I to be the zero ideal, this A zero to be A. So this is a Huber ring. Suppose A is iadic for some finitely generated ideal I, then my I is this I and then A0 is A. Okay? So, yes, Ah, what is iadic? Yeah. So iadic means that um, A0 has a uh, basis of, of open neighborhoods of 0 given by i power n. So it might be complete also given that basis of open neighborhood, but we don't impose completeness here. Fine. So the third example is precisely uh, this kind of example. So rigid analytic case.
So note that we can define a norm here so called the supremum norm. So if I have and f is here, so f is summation e i t to the power i, then norm of f so is supremum over all these i's of the i's. So in this, yeah. So A0 is open in the topology of A. Topology on A0 is given by this i adic topology. But then you can change A0 and i. I mean, it does not matter whether, I mean, it is not part of the data. So it will be, then there exists some A0 and there exists some i inside A0. But it, the same topological ring can be, I mean, Huber for different um, ring of definition, and different ideal of definition. The same way that in addict case that we saw in the last lecture, I can take different ideals to be the ideal of definition. Fine. And then uh, right, let us go to this example. And then uh, this OK, T1 up to Tn, this is precisely all F inside K T1 Tn such that Some more examples. Uh, this is five, probably. So suppose a, a zero be any ring, and G inside a zero, a non-zero divisor. Take the localization, so invert G, so this is my A, and the topology is given by uh, Gn A0. So these are the basis of open neighborhoods around zero. And this will give, define a topology on A. And then A is Huber. And of course, you can guess that A is A0 is A0. So I'm not writing that total tautological thing. And I is ideal generated by G. Or you can take any power of G. So note that in this example, G is G is inside A, and uh, powers of and G is a unit, and powers of G tends to zero. So this is something called the Tate condition. Before that, again, I want to see whether yeah. So one more thing that. So six, so B is Huber together with B zero inside B, ring of definition. And I zero inside B zero, finitely generated ideal of definition. And I take again, a to be which is by definition all summation b j t to the power j such that b j tends to zero as g tends to infinity. And then a zero in this setting will be the i zero adic completion
So these are the examples that we'll probably keep repeating again and again and keep coming back again and again. So again, sorry that we have to go through the pain of seeing lots of definition. So A is a Huber ring. Um, A0, uh, sorry, S inside A is called bounded. If for all, for any neighborhood U of zero, there exists a neighborhood V of zero such that um, S times V is contained inside U. This one and thing is that G is inside A is called power bounded. Where? No. Where, where? In number six. Yeah, I take the isoiodic completion of uh, this. No, this is not uh, given. Is it easy to see that? Yeah, I think this will be. This A0 and then the power series, formal power series in T1 up to Tn such that, yeah. So, I mean, the coefficient will tend to zero, but the coefficients are in, now inside A0. Yeah, it's called power bounded if the following set, G, G square. This is bounded. So what's the point of going through this pain of defining bounded and power bounded? So at least in this case of uh, the state case, we see that this OK or this OK T1 TN or OK T1 TN modulo, this ideal I, all of these things will be bounded in the norm. So any element inside OK T1 T Tn, this will be actually power bounded. Yeah, remarks. So if A be a K affinoid ring, so K affinoid ring means that it comes as uh, this K T1 Tn modulo some ideal J, which is reduced. Then the set of power bounded elements are bounded in the, the soup. No. And since we, we are going to construct this space of uh, out of this Huber rings as if space of valuation, so then valuation has two parts. One is somehow giving the ring of integers. So that is some sort of a bounded set there or power bounded set there. So this is a power bounded thing is the natural definition that must arise in this situation. Okay, but then there is this uh, condition reduced. So I can take, um, K A to be K epsilon, where um, K is a non Archimedean field. So we can show the set of power bounded elements. is equal to um, OK direct sum K epsilon. 
Okay. And the next exercise is that OK direct sum K epsilon is not bounded. So the, here is the reduced property that is important. Fine. So the following, I mean, this, these remarks are not that difficult. I mean, I will say which theorems are difficult to prove. We haven't arrived to those results, but then, so A, be a Huber ring, and A0 inside A sub ring, so A0 is a ring of definition, if and only if, uh, A0 is open and bounded. So here the finite generation of the ideal is important. Otherwise you cannot get this property. Okay. So for instance, in this case, so what are the, what is the set of power bounded elements here? It is precisely in this case, so precisely these are the set of power bounded elements. And so the thing that I didn't say, so let A0 be all G inside A, G power bounded. Then A0 is open and um, A0 is union of A tildes, where A tildes are um, rings of definition. So if you take all the rings of definition that is available to the, the Huber ring, if you take union over them, so this union will be a, a filtered union. So, so you, then that is same as all power bounded elements. But we already see, we have already seen that uh, if A zero is a ring of definition, then it is open and bounded. So all of these constituents are open and bounded, but it does not imply that A zero is bounded. So there are cases when A0 itself is uh, bounded and it is given open, so it can be taken as ring of, ring of definition. So for instance, in this case, we can take this to be ring of definition. But in this case, we cannot take this to be ring of definition. So again, uh, I forgot to give the typical uh, examples that uh, comes from algebraic geometry or formal schemes. So uh, any element in um, an adic ring A is bounded, power bounded. This is a very tautological statement, I and mean, there's nothing to prove actually. So, in particular, so if you have a affine, so if you have a ring, a ring, which is discrete, I can take A and A, where this A is not only a ring of definition here, but it is also the set of power bounded elements. And if again, if A is an, an adic ring, then I can associate to it A comma A. Again, the same thing happens that 
um, this is not only the ring of definition, but it is also an addict ring. Okay. But I mean, what is this statement saying that any ring of definition is actually contained inside the set of power bounded elements? Tate rings. So the state rings are the class of rings or the class of spaces where we want to do the local calculus, which looks like Banach algebra and maps between Banach algebras. So state rings are, so A is a Hoover ring. Sorry. A is called state if there exists a G inside A which is a locally, sorry not, it is a topologically, topologically nilpotent unit. So it's, it means that it is a unit and powers of G converges to zero. This is the topologically nilpotent part. So again, I will give a long list of examples here because that was helpful for me. So I hope that those who are learning it for the first time, it will be helpful for them. So first example we have already seen is this thing that A0, uh, any ring, discrete ring, G inside A0, non-zero divisor and um, I take A to be A0 G inverse, then G is a topologically nilpotent unit here. So in particular, A, A0, so A is state when we equip A with G power N A0 as basis of open neighborhoods around zero. So there are many more trivial examples. So I start with A to B, A B Hoover, A Tate, sorry, and phi is a continuous ring homomorphism. Then B is state. Because unit gets mapped to unit and then it's continuous, so it will be a locally, it will be a topologically nilpotent unit. But not only this, I claim that if phi A to B um, continuous uh, homomorphism, between state rings, then phi maps bounded to bounded. Fine. So this is a very important part of uh, state rings. This obviously fails if we remove uh, the state assumption. So one example will be just take k to be any discrete valuation, uh, sorry, k to be a uh, non-Archimedean field. So a, take a to be the non-Archimedean field with the discrete topology and b to be the non-Archimedean field with the non-topology. Then take the identity map. So it does not take uh, bounded to bounded. 
So Tate is a special kind of um, rings where this kind of, so, and you can see that I can, ah, okay, so why this is true, and then we'll identify this with Banach algebras and So to prove or to give a sketch of the proof of this, we need some uh, theorems as follows or some results as follows. So if G is, so A is Huber, uh, A0 ring of definition, and G inside A topologically nilpotent unit, then I can, there, there exists some n, um, maybe greater than zero such that um, a is equal to a zero g n inverse, and a zero g power n addic. Here again, addic does not mean that it is complete. I'm just taking that the topology on A0 can be given by the ideal generated by g power n. Fine. And not only this, the second fact is that um, S inside A is bounded if and only if S is contained inside for some n. So now to prove this uh, this thing, I mean, you can balance the rings of definition such a way, it looks like a map from A0 localized at some x inverse to B0 localized at phi of x inverse. And then uh, the bounded condition is obvious from. And not only this, for Tate ring, we can define a, uh, so let A be a complete Tate ring. And A0 inside A ring of definition. So all of these things that I said, I mean, it is in, invariant under what ring of definition you choose. And it is a, it's not that difficult to prove. So I get a rank one uh, valuation of A given by mod A infimum of two power N such that infimum over So this defines a norm on A. So it's a, in fact, it's a rank one norm. And here you can see that uh, if G is, uh, oh, okay. So what is G? G is the uh, G is the topologically important unit. Fine, so of course mod g is half, and mod g minus one is two, and mod a equal to zero, if and only if a equal to zero. And what is um, a zero in this setting? So a zero is precisely all um, a inside a, such that mod a, Less than equal to one. Two to the power minus n. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, of course, a is, I'm assuming a is. Otherwise, this 
not work. Okay. So in particular, the tate rings behave really nicely, but then there is another class of rings which is. Um, it depends on g. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, if you choose another g, it will be a power of the chosen g. But then the norms are equivalent. So I mean, and at the end of the day, we are actually going to use equivalent valuation or equivalent norms. So this is not going to change anything. Okay. So there is some some notion of analytic uh, over ring, whose use will be clear in the third lecture or in the second lecture. So uh, A be a Hoover ring, A is called analytic. If the ideal generated by topologically nilpotent elements is equal to A. So in particular, Tate ring are analytic rings, but these are the setting, this is the setting where we'll be able to give one, some nice result. I mean, Tate, which holds for Tate ring because it looks like localization, a single variable, but, and then at the end of the day, we want to define what is a Uber pair. So, I mean, uh, at least for me, it is important to remember this QP and ZP or uh, this kind of pairs. So here, these are not only rings of definition, these are also um, power bound, set of power bounded elements. But more than that, this is algebraically closed inside, integrally closed inside QP. So all those smaller sub rings are integrally closed inside QP. So in particular, if you have a valuation, the, the ring of integers is integrally closed inside uh, the field. So at the end of the day, uh, we want to identify, so again, I mean, so maybe I should not say much <laughs> than writing a Huber pair is given by A, A plus, where A is Huber, A plus is open and plus is contained inside A0. Remember, A0 is the ring of power bounded elements. Fine. So, what is the next step? So, we want to construct the space a space out of this. So, suppose A, is A be any ring, uh, SPVA is the, yeah, sorry, I didn't mention, right? sorry, bounded elements, open, and A plus is, Integrally close. Sorry. So it is integrally closed inside A. Yeah. Closed in A. Well, so the space of or the valuation spectrum is defined to be the set of valuation set of norms. A modulo the equivalence relation, which is saying that when two valuation or two norms are equivalent. Fine? 
or you can write it in a different way because any norm, if I take the support of the norm or the kernel of the norm, that will give you a prime ideal. And the value group, you can take the minimal possible value group of the valuation, you can take that set, then you can get rid of this equivalence relation. Okay? But, I mean, it does not matter. I mean, and the equivalence relation precisely says that if I take two norms, if A, B is less than equal to, so norm of A is less than equal to norm of B in this, if and only if norm of A is less than equal to norm of B in this. So, you take this uh, SPVA and, um, and then what? Yeah. And then if take continuous valuation. This is a subset of this uh, such that um, this is inside quant A if for any gamma inside the value group of this norm, the set A inside A such that mod A less than gamma is open. Okay, so this can be done if a is a topological ring, but we will only apply this for Huber case. And the last thing is Huber pair, so, so let A, A plus be a Huber pair, then This is a subset of quant A such that this A plus is less than or equal to 1. So in particular, this looks like I mean for the valuation, for all the valuations such that A plus looks like some of, some of the ring of integers of that valuation. Fine. So a priori, all of these spaces, so if A is discrete, there are points in, so what will be A plus in that case? So it will be A again, so A comma A, but then in spa A comma A, there will be points associated to the points coming from spectrum of A. Because given any prime ideal, you can construct a valuation whose kernel is the corresponding prime ideal. But uh, but then, even in the case of discrete ring, there will be more points. So, let us take spa ZZ. So, there is one trivial valuation. We start with Z and take the trivial group, value group, this, union zero, which sends everything other than zero to one and zero to zero. So this is my generic point. Um, and then there are this uh, composition, set mod P, and then I take the trivial valuation on this thing. So the kernel will be the prime ideal. So we get already all the elements of spectrum of A. But then what is, um, and there are more, so I can take the, for any prime P, take the periodic valuation. Okay? And these are all. So this comes from the fact that the valuation in of Z, I mean, this is precisely all the valuation of Z. There is, because Z is discrete, so question of continuity does not arise at all in this setting. So, and the valuation of Z up to equivalence are precisely this. So either they are 
trivial valuation like this, or periodic valuation or periodic norm to the power some uh, positive real numbers, but then it, they will be all equivalent for a fixed p. So I get only these points. Okay. So, but then we have points. Now we want to have a topology on it. So here comes the non-trivial theorems. Whatever I said till now, I mean, with a bit of hard work, you can probably prove all of this yourself. But the next statement is the following that um, I write a sequence of theorems. So first of all, this SPVA is quasi-compact. Uh, okay, I have to define what is a topology here. Yeah. So maybe right before writing the theorem. So, um, so take, just write SPVA as X and F1, F2, Fn and S are elements inside A. Take, define this to be all valuation in X such that V of Fi is less than equal to V of S not equal to zero. Okay. So these are, first of all, um, the topology on X is given by these, these as um, basis of open set. Okay. And then you can similarly, so these are all subspaces. So quant A or uh, spa, these are all subspaces of this space. So you can define subspace topology using these topologies. So these are called rational subsets. In case of, uh, if I take intersection of this with uh, spa A, A plus. So this is uh, somehow corresponds to I invert DS. Uh, so this is something like S not equal to zero and S equal to one put together. So this, this kind of open sets generate these open sets and we are taking that's topology generated by these basis of, basis of open sets. So now this is not the end. I mean, this gives the topology. The surprising theorem is that SPVA quant A um, spa A A plus are all spectral. So what does this mean? So this means, I mean, if, if you remember, I started with the properties of spec A. So spec A is quasi-compact. So these things are all quasi-compact. Every reducible component has a unique, a irreducible post set has a unique generic point. So the same thing happens here. And there is a basis of quasi-compact open sets. So these are quasi-compact and this gives the basis here. So this theorem also says that these sets are quasi-compact open sets. And also intersections, quasi-compact open sets of this form are stable under finite intersection. So that is clear at least that if I take finite intersection of this kind of things, I will get again something which looks like this. Okay. So it's are all spectral with uh, quasi-compact basis given by so in case of this kind of thing I just take intersection with sorry and similarly I take intersection with this so this gives you the quasi compact basis so this is uh, difficult in this setting and it, is, it was not difficult in case of formal scheme or uh, spectrum. 
I mean, spectrum of a ring for the following reason. It's not that interesting, but in case of spec A, so DF is quasi compact and it generates. It comes from the fact that, of course, you have this some sort of partition of unity in the sense that if you take all the function, they generate the unit ideal, but I can take finite sum. So, but then DF is actually homeomorphic to spec of AF. Or there is a map from A to AF, which induces a map from spec AF to spec A, such that the image of this is precisely DF, and it is a homeomorphism onto the, onto the image. This does not happen here. So you, you, you can probably think that I can take um, A1 by S. So my X is SPVA, so I can take A1 by S. And then can take the subring contained here. Fine. So normally here, this uh, in this subring, S might not be invertible. So that means there exists a prime ideal containing this. So there exists a valuation which kills S. So this implies SPV a f1 s to whatever f n s to s p v or to x. This this will take so there exists a valuation which goes to which maps s to zero, but in the image I mean as you can see that v s is not equal to zero, so you cannot really conclude that if I know for any ring. SPV is quasi-compact, then it is obvious that DFs are also quasi-compact. So you need separate argument for each of them. And the argument is also pretty nice. I mean, the thing is that we take the space of valuation and we put it inside um, okay. So because a valuation will give a relation. And this is precisely the set of relation. But not all relation will be in the image. So the relation that have, there will be finitely many condition, which will give a closed, so this image will be a closed subspace here. But then this space, I mean, I have to say what is the topology here. So I take discrete topology here, then product topology. And then this space is precisely um, compact and housed off. So and it is closed here, so it will be quasi-compact. And then all these open sets are also quasi-compact here. This, so this is more or less the reason when, and, but then this is the easiest part of this chain of result. The first one is precisely this kind of argument, but then starting from quant A and spa A A plus, this becomes really difficult. So normally you have to re-identify quant A so here, this continuity property is assumed, but somehow we know how to deal with SPVA, or sometimes SPVA comma I, where I is some sort of a sub support data. So you have to identify quant A with SPVA comma some ideal I, which is some sort of algebraic relation using the valuation theory. And similar thing happens here. So this, all these three results are not that straightforward, and probably that's the most difficult part in the first part of construction of the space. So now, yeah, so my time is over. So now, uh, so uh, this is the end of today's lecture. So next lecture, we, will, we have constructed a space that we are interested in. We will construct functions on it, and we'll construct a locally ringed space out of the functions and this topological space. And Chitravanu in the third lecture will give you several examples that will probably tell you more about these spaces. Thank you.